Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be checking out a torque vectoring differential and this particular differential that we're looking at is out of a Lexus RCF. Now if you haven't yet checked out my videos on differentials in the playlist that I have, you may want to check out those first so I'll include links in the video description uh, as this is a bit more complicated than some of those. But what we are looking at is very similar to an open differential except that it has two clutch packs uh, and planetary gear sets on either side of it. So in the center here you've got your ring gear which the pinion matches up to and it rotates this center differential here which is essentially an open differential. So each of the axles have their own planetary gear set matched with a clutch pack and what this does is it allows the axle on either side to lock up with the differential housing and what that does is sends more torque to that wheel. So here you can see the left casing for the left axle planetary set and then inside of this housing here you can see the clutch pack which matches up with that and a electric motor is used to activate uh, to engage and disengage that clutch pack. So here you can see how the electric motor mounts up with the housing and then if you look on the other side you can see the gear that this motor meshes with and so as that gear rotates it will apply more or less pressure to the clutch pack. So here's what the packaging of that looks like once it's all hooked up. As you can see here, as I rotate the input shaft, we have both of the output shafts rotating at the same rate. Now, so let's take a look at how that electric motor can actually compress that clutch pack. And keep in mind, there's different ways of doing this. This is just kind of one of the simple ways to explain it. Um, but you know, you could do hydraulic or other methods. Uh, but what we've got going on here is you've got this electric motor and on the end of it you have this gear and so when this gear rotates it rotates this other gear which attached to it is this cam and so as this cam rotates this motor is going to rotate this gear up here that'll rotate this gear rotating this cam and as that cam rotates you can see the shape of this will force it to press this green portion of the cam in so as you can see that rotates and these two lobes here come into contact with one another and so this pushes the green lobe inward and as you can see that will compress that clutch pack and so you've now uh, engaged the clutch whereas before it was disengaged when you allow that cam to kind of move out. So let's talk about the torque vectoring differential and how it differs how much torque is sent to each wheel uh, using these clutch packs. And this is kind of a simplified version to understand what's going on, but nonetheless, it will explain the concept. So here, if you're driving in a straight line, uh, torque vectoring differential like I'm showing here will actually send even power to both wheels. So a 50-50 torque distribution. Uh, so you've got 100% of the torque coming in. It's acting just like an open differential. So it'll come in through the pinion to the ring gear, to the spider gears, then to the two axles where it will send an even torque to both sides. Now, what happens when you're in a cornering situation differs a bit, and this is where power is sent to the outside wheel. So if you're going in, uh, you know, around a corner and you're taking, let's say, a left-hand corner, then, and you're accelerating out, then it'll send more power to that outside, that right tire. So here we're looking at kind of a top-down view uh, of this clutch pack, and so, or of this differential with the clutch packs. So what we've got going on is you've got your pinion here and the ring gear, and then these two uh, rectangles I've drawn here in purple are the clutch packs. And what they do is essentially connect this axle to the differential housing. So what happens is when you engage this clutch, you've got your power coming in and going, your torque rather, coming in and splitting between the two axles. Now when you engage this clutch, now suddenly this axle is matched directly to this differential housing. So not only do you have that torque coming in and splitting between the two, but you have torque that can directly pass from the pinion to the ring gear to this left axle. So you're sending more torque towards that axle and less torque towards the other axle. And by differing the clutch packs and how you operate those, you can change the amount of torque that goes from one side to the other side. So what I'm demonstrating here is that you can rotate the input shaft coming into this differential and as you can see on the right side it's rotating however you can hold the left side still and so this is basically representing if the clutch pack here was disengaged and you'd be sending much more torque to this right wheel here than over to this wheel on this side. So let's look at a scenario of how this differential might be used. So as you're coming into a corner it's going to apply equal pressure to both uh, rear tires and that's basically to help stability as you're basically going in a straight line. Then once you start turning in it's going to transfer more torque 
to the inside tire and that's going to help rotate the vehicle. Then once you hit the apex, it's going to send more torque to the outside tire uh, and that's once again propelling you forward at this point in time and that's done to maintain stability. And then as you come out of the corner and you're hard on the acceleration, then it's going to apply more on the outside in order to push you out of that corner. So the benefits of a torque vectoring differential is that it allows you to have better cornering performance, it provides better stability, and also it provides better traction so you can accelerate better on loose surface conditions, uh, for example snow or off-road. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.